everyone, I'm Eliza Grahams. Along with my co-authors Andrew Stillman, Morgan Tingley, and Chris Elphick, I wrote the R Package Lit Searcher, which helps to identify search terms for systematic reviews. The reason that we wrote Lit Searcher is because choosing search terms for a systematic review is really important, but it's also really hard. You want to choose terms that are broad enough to capture all of the articles related to your topic, but you also want your terms to be specific so you don't get a lot of irrelevant articles that you then have to sort through. The method underlying Lit Searcher is published in our paper, which you can read in Methods in Ecology and Evolution. This video is just going to be a quick demonstration of how to use the Lit Searcher package, and you can get more information about it at the website, which is listed at the bottom of the screen, including templates and tutorials that you can use to get started. Okay, so I've switched into our studio now, which is what we're going to be using to work with Lit Searcher. And the first thing that you can see on the screen is our naive search. So the example that we're working with today is a systematic review to answer the question, what processes lead to declines in the black-backed woodpecker occupancy with time since fire? And so we have our occupancy outcomes, um, some potential processes, synonyms for fire, and then synonyms for woodpecker. And so we're going to copy that over and go to Web of Science. Then there I'm going to search the Biosis Citation Index. And the idea behind this is that we want to retrieve a lot of articles that are related to our topic, but that might not be perfectly um, suited, but they're going to have good terms in them. So we want to export this in a way that Lit Searcher will understand it. We want to export all of these records. And Lit Searcher is expecting it to be the full record and tab delimited Mac UTF-8. Doesn't matter if you're not on a Mac, that's the format that you should use because that's what Lit Searcher is expecting. Then export that. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that step. And then we can do the same thing in a couple of other databases. So for um, this database, um, this is Academic Search Premier on the EBSCO platform, the way that you want to save it is to email yourself a link to the results. Um, and you can export them in an RIS format because Lit Searcher will work with the RevTools package to import them. So then email them to yourself and download them. I also searched in BLFL Academic Search Engine as just a uh, third source and the full naive search didn't retrieve any articles so I shortened it to just woodpecker and fire or burn because those are our most basic keywords and then exported them by doing all records export and again to RIS. Okay so now that I've downloaded all of those results I put them into this naive results folder and then I'm going to use lit searcher to import all of the files that are in that folder and then double check that it's getting um, the right number of articles per database. We can see it's kind of hard to read the BLFL ones, so I'm going to replace the name of that database for anything that is from base selection. And now we can check, and those are the right numbers, so Lit Searcher imported everything from our naive results and knows what database it came from. We also want to remove duplicates, because if we have the same articles overrepresented, then we're going to get the same keywords back, even though they might not be good keywords, they're just used in the same article. Uh, there's a couple different ways to remove duplicates in Lit Searcher. I went with the quick method and only do duplicated based on the title, but you can change that depending on the structure of your data set. Now that we've read in all of our results, we want to extract potential keywords, and so the first thing that we do is we put, paste together all of the titles and abstracts from our import because we want to go through those and look for potential search terms. Uh, this function extract terms is using the rapid automatic keyword extraction algorithm as the method to find terms. I've told it that I only want terms that occur at least twice and that our n-grams of two words are greater. So I only want phrases, I don't want single words. There's a couple other ways to do this, so there's also a fake rake method if you don't have our Java and some other uh, ways to get keywords out. Um, so we can look at these, and the way that Rake has identified these terms means that we're going to get some that aren't really relevant, like abstract authors, but some of them are going to be good. In total, it found over 1,800 keywords that we might want to consider because they're used frequently in this set of literature. We also, of course, want to get the actual keywords that authors and databases tagged articles with, and so we can append those to the raked keywords and get a list of all of the potential keywords that we might want to consider for our review. Okay, so now that we have our complete list of keywords, we want to choose the ones that are the most important and are going to return the articles that we want in our search. Um, so to do that, we're going to create a document feature matrix, which takes the title and abstract of each article, 
and then checks to see whether or not they have the keywords because we want to know when the keywords are co-occurring. If they're co-occurring frequently or occurring with a lot of other important terms, then they're going to be really useful for our search because they're central to the field of study. So we can look at a section of what that document feature matrix looks like. And we can tell that Article 1 doesn't actually have any of these seven keywords, but Article 6 has anthropogenic disturbance, black-backed woodpecker, and boreal forest. So those three terms are co-occurring in this article. Because it's a co-occurrence network, we can turn it into a graph, which is going to be a more informative way to look at these keywords. To give you a sense of what the graph looks like, I'm going to plot the network, um, and it's really hard to actually tell what's going on here, and that's because we have so many terms. Um, but the ones that are more central are in the middle of the network, and then the ones that are outside are not as important. So to winnow this network down, we want to get rid of all of those terms that aren't really important. And to do that, we're going to look at network node strength. Um, node strength is a weighted measure of how important a keyword is in the network. Um, and we want the ones that have really uh, large node strengths. We don't really want the ones in this long tail because they're not occurring very frequently, or when they are, it's not with other terms that we're using. So they're pretty um, outside of the scope of our review. We want to find a cutoff above which we'll consider terms. There's two different ways to do this in LitSearcher. I'm using the cumulative method here, um, which is just um, looking for the minimum number of terms that will give me the percent strength of the network that I want. Okay, so now that we have a cutoff in what node strength we're going to consider for a keyword to be important, we want to actually get our search terms so we can look at what those are. It's pulling back some pretty reasonable ones, and it looks like in total it's given us 135 terms that we might want to consider using for our search. I'm going to write those terms to a CSV so that I can go through and decide for each suggested term whether or not it meets any of our concept categories and should be included. So this is the CSV that I um, exported from R, and what I want to do here is make a column for a group and a column for term. And then I want to go through and for each term decide whether or not it fits into one of our concept groups that we're using. So I'm going to say that this is indeed a bird. Black pack woodpecker fits in our bird category. Boreal forest is not one of our categories, so I'm going to say no. Breeding season could be a potential process, and so on. So I'll go through all 135 of these and assign them to one or more of our groups. Okay, so now that I've gone through all of the terms and grouped them into our concept categories, we can read that CSV back in and look at um, how I structured it. So I have the first column for the group and then the second column for terms. So you can see that I assigned uh, both bird community and blackback woodpecker to bird. At this point, we might want to add in some single word phrases that we didn't ask Lit Searcher to look for, um, but that we still think are important. For example, we might still want to include dispersal in our process group, even though it's only one word. And so we'll do that for process, fire, the bird group, and then our responses, and put those all together into a list, which we can then look at. Um, you'll notice that there are some terms which appear in multiple groups, so like woodpecker nests appears in bird, obviously because it's about woodpecker, but it's also a potential process, so it's in that group as well. So now that we have our search terms, we are going to have Lit Searcher write a Boolean search for us and remove all of the redundant terms. So for example, we're searching for foraging and foraging habitat, but foraging habitat is covered by foraging, so we can remove foraging habitat because it's redundant. Um, and Lit Searcher will identify all of those terms that are redundant and remove them automatically. We might also want to search in languages other than English, so I'm going to read in my Google Translate API key here, which you have to get outside of Lit Searcher, but it's free as long as you're not making thousands of queries every month. And then I'm going to have Lit Searcher suggest which languages other than English I might want to search, given that the topic of our review falls under conservation, ecology, or ornithology. And so it's recommending that we probably want to search in Russian, German, Spanish, French, and maybe some other languages. And so I'm going to have Lit Searcher write a search for me in English, Russian, and French. And then we can look at the output of that. You could ignore all of the backslashes. Um, that's just an escape character for R. But when you write the searches to a file, it'll get removed. 
So that was just a quick demonstration of how you can use LitSearcher to identify search terms for a systematic review. Again, the method underlying LitSearcher is published in our paper in Methods in Ecology and Evolution, and you can get more information about the package, including how to install it, and then templates and tutorials at the LitSearcher website, which is listed at the bottom of the screen.